Hi. In the last lecture, we talked about the advection diffusion equation in 1D. Today, we're going to extend that discussion to a general multidimensional advection diffusion reaction equation, and we're going to derive the weak form of the equation uh, in this lecture. So if you consider the steady advection diffusion equation uh, in, multi in, in vector notation, so we have a, a known velocity uh, field A, so this is our velocity vector, dot grad U, so U is our scalar field that we're solving, so either concentration, for example, that's being transported or temperature. Then we also have the diffusion term, the divergence of uh, the diffusive flux, or, or the uh, and then uh, or the diffusion term, and then we also have a source term, uh, also known as a reaction term in the context of um, the advection diffusion reaction equation. So the source term S is assumed to be known. So this is either a constant or a function of space. So you know if the diffusion coefficient is constant, you can also rewrite this advection diffusion equation. Uh, like this, where you take the diffusion coefficient out and you have the Laplacian operator. So here we know the velocity field A, which could be a function of space. And we know the material property, the diffusion coefficient, and we know the reaction uh, source term, and we want to solve for U, which is an unknown concentration field. So this is a strong form of the equation, together with the boundary condition, where we assume the boundaries uh, divided into two parts. We have the um, the Newman, uh, the Dirichlet boundary, which is the part where the uh, solution is exactly known and prescribed. And the other part of the boundary is a Newman boundary, where in this case, we're assuming that the diffusive flux, so the normal vector dotted with the d grad u, or d partial u partial n, is given, and that value we assume is h. We can also assume that uh, the problem basically could also be defined in another way where uh, instead of the diffusive flux, we could have the total flux. So like the diffusive and advective flux due to the advection together prescribed at the boundary. Uh, or yeah, so this could be written in this equation or uh, you can also have a minus sign here on both sides if you like. Uh, then uh, this is, uh, I'll explain later how we can tr uh, uh, treat uh, this part, if we're given the boundary condition in this form. Okay, so now to write the weak form, first we define our function spaces. So we have the trial function space where our solution sits somewhere inside it. It's the space of all H1 functions. So square integrable with the first derivative also square integrable, where we are enforcing the Dirichlet boundary condition uh, on the Dirichlet boundary. The, the test function or weight function is a similar space and the difference, all difference is that uh, the weight functions are zero, as we previously explained, on the Dirichlet boundary. So now, uh, our goal is uh, to solve the weak form of the equation, which is uh, uh, basically we take the equation, and we multiply it by the test function W, and we integrate. Okay, so what, in doing that, we also use integration by parts on the term with the highest order derivative, so the diffusion term, to make to reduce the order of the derivative to first order derivatives. So if you do that, you do the integration by parts, similar to how we've done it in previous lectures, you get this uh, highlighted equation where you have the advection term. This is simply the advection term we had multiplied by the weight function. And then we have the diffusion term and the right hand side, we have the Newman flux and just the source reaction term. So the way we derived this equation from this equation up here is that we essentially just use integration by parts, as you can see in this blue equation here. So we take the, the diffusion term multiplied by the weight function, we uh, do integration by parts, we uh, switch the place of the derivative. So the gradient here is moved to W, so you get grad W, then you have the dot product with D grad U. So remember, U and W are both scalars, so their gradient is vector, so the dot product between two vectors is a scalar, as we expect. So we switch the place of the gradient operator, and then we change the sign, so this becomes positive. And then for the boundary term, in, in place of the gradient, we essentially just plug in the normal vector. Uh, and then we integrate over the boundary, okay? And this integral is only done on the new boundary because w is zero on the other part of the boundary, which is the Dirichlet portion. And then here, um, the diffusive uh, 
flux or the new boundary condition pops up, which you can replace with the known value h, which we already know. And then we take that to the right-hand side. The source term, we don't make any changes to it. That's also on the right-hand side. So then we get this weak form of the equation, which is this highlighted equation. And the right-hand side are all known. And then the left-hand side, u is what we really want to solve. Now, if our flux was defined, if our new boundary condition was defined as total flux, so what you see up here, when you plug in for the d partial u partial n that appears here, you're going to also have, you're going to have not only h, but also another term, which is u a dot n. Okay, so, and then what happens in that case is that this integral will be made up of two terms. One part is uh, simply w times h, similar to what you have right now, but then there will be another term, which will be u times a dot n, the normal velocity, on the boundary. And the, 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 the thing is that since uh, u concentration is the unknown that we're solving, and we don't know its value on the new boundary, that part becomes an unknown part. So you will have to really think of that as a, take that to the left-hand side of the equation, okay? Um, now, I can define these uh, notations similar to what we done previously. So these are, the operators are defined. This is for the diffusion term. This is for the advection term. Uh, so just notice that the difference here is that the advection operator, which we, so with C, we have two input functions, W and U, but also it's parameterized by A. So A here, the velocity field is a parameter for this operator. And then we have the regular inner product and also the, another regular inner product, which is only defined at the new boundary for the new boundary condition. So with this notation, I can rewrite the highlighted equation or my weak form as such, where the left-hand side contains the unknowns, the right-hand side are the completely known terms. Okay, so now then we move on to Galerkian approximation, similar to what we saw before. So we discretize our space of functions. So now we talk about S superscript H or new H. So this H here denotes that now I have discretized my uh, domain. And we also show uh, find the solution, discretized solution now, belonging to this finite dimensional uh, space, which comes from mesh discretization. So we have the same weak form, but now we're just going to use the superscript H uh, notation to show that, okay, now we're not talking about the continuous integral equation problem, but now we're talking about in a discrete sense on, on elements. Okay. And essentially our domain omega is now divided into a bunch of tiny uh, subdomains or elements, uh, uh, omega E. Okay, and over each element, as we previously talked about, we write our solution uh, in a linear or in a piecewise linear or really linear over each element or quadratic over each element. And the way we do that is through these shape functions which we discussed. So we write the solution over each element using the shape functions defined for that element multiplied by the unknown nodal values. So u sub a is an unknown solution at node a. So this is done for the nodes that do not belong to the Dirichlet boundary condition. For the nodes that belong to the Dirichlet boundary condition, uh, we know the solution. Uh, or so we have to either write it as in this way, or we can just ignore this. And later, when we assemble the system of equations, account for this Dirichlet boundary condition or enforce it, which we'll talk about that in later lectures. Okay, so similarly for the uh, for the weight functions, we have similar approximation using the same shape functions because we're doing Galerkian. Uh, and then uh, the just the degrees of freedom, the W sub A's are just set to one because they're just arbitrary. So then that leads us to the discrete for a uh, weak form. So, so this is the uh, new uh, weak form that we have that's discretized. Uh, we have the same uh, operators, which now we're going to call them matrices, as the ones that we've had before, but now it's just we have the shape functions plugged in and we're calculating each of these uh, matrices over each element. So that's the superscript E and the subscript A and B denote the uh, the location within the mat matrix. So these are could be a three by three, two by two, four by four matrix, depending on the type of elements and the dimensions we're solving the problem. Okay, so we have the advection matrix, which has the known velocity 
in it. We have the diffusion matrix, okay, based on the shape functions. And we have the forcing term that contains the known source term as well as the new and value dimension. So then what we do is that we do this calculation over each element. Okay, so it's, so just keep in mind that C, K, F, these are all known quantities. It doesn't contain anything that's unknown, right? The shape functions, I know how they are defined for each element. The, and the other things that appear here are just the known parameters of the problem. So really, this is where the unknown, the, the solution, the nodal values of the solution, this is where they appear, which is basically you have these matrices, uh, and once and they are multiplied by the unknown solution and then equal to some known right hand side vector. Okay. So when you assemble all these matrices over each element, you get the big C matrix, the overall um, kind of advection matrix, and the overall diffusion matrix, and the overall right hand side forcing term. So this becomes the final equation, which is the linear system of equations that you need to solve for you. So you have two matrices C and K added together one representing advection, one diffusion, you get a big matrix, and then that multiplied by a vector of unknowns. So these are your nodal solution values, assuming you have n different nodes in your mesh. And that's equal to the right-hand side known vector, which is a uh, known, uh, again, similar size as your unknown degrees of freedom. So then you solve this linear system of equations using linear solvers, which we'll talk about in later lectures. So uh, in next lecture, we'll talk about the challenge in using this approach and specifically how do we do stabilization when dealing with uh, this uh, multidimensional advection diffusion equation in high-packed number region.